I'm glad that I laid out what I, uh, what, what I want to say today because there are a lot of people here who have stories about uh, what they've done, case studies and uh, things like that. And uh, rather than tell some of them, I thought I would take um, someone like Joe, uh, maybe five or ten years ago, including myself, where you say, where do I start? What, do, what am I, uh, what do I really want to do? So what we're, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to give many answers, and I'm really not going to say anything that you haven't heard either here or, uh, or somewhere else beforehand. Uh, instead, let's try to think, if you're in a position where you don't know what to do, here are some things to think about. Um, first of all, the plant engineer's number one priority, and this is the perspective that I wanted to give. And um, if, you're a, um, if you're a supplier, uh, look at this and see you know, some of the priorities that, that your customers are looking at. And if you're a plant engineer, I, I, I think you can probably relate to some of these. But the first one is never, ever, 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 ever run out of compressed air. And that's, that's a given. Uh, and some of the uh, things about it are that uh, don't let the pressure drop below normal. Um, you don't ever want to need to run a compressor. And um, <clears throat> you don't want to have a uh, crisis regarding compressed air. And um, the assumption that it's always there and taken for granted. And Leslie said that yesterday morning too. That uh, you know uh, the plant uh, supervision uh, really doesn't care about it because it's not on their radar. So some of the things you can do about that are um, you can run more than enough, if not every compressor that you sing, that you uh, that you have. Um, and this is one. This is a good one. Install a fake gauge that says 110 psi or whatever. <laughs> It's supposed to be, and it's amazing how well that works sometimes, because the department manager comes out and he sees, you know, uh, he sees something that's lower than normal, but more than enough for what they need. They'll, they'll, they'll start complaining. So um, anyway, it's 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 kind of uh, it's it's comical, but it works. Um, and then you can have a tech working on compressors uh, all the time. Um, in our company. We make carpet, we spin yarn, we, uh, uh, we make backing materials. We do a lot of different things that we have highly specialized machinery and uh, mechanics, technicians who work on that. We want them to spend their time working on that. That's the, um, that those are the things that are proprietary information to us and things like that. Um, you might be able to find somebody who can come in and fix your compressors for you. So. Looking at alternatives, um, you know, let's, uh, uh, you know, what, what can you do if you're in that position? Well, um, first of all, why are we doing this? Compressed air, uh, no secret, I think everybody here has heard it probably a dozen times already, that uh, it's a large part of the plant electric bill. Uh, it doesn't get viewed in the same account. Now, what, am I, what I mean by that is uh, a lot of times the electric bill goes through accounting somehow uh, and, and it gets paid. Uh, and, and it's not necessarily tied to anything in the plant. And um, there, at the same time, as the, uh, as in, as the uh, plant engineer or whatever exact role, you have a lot of costs that are associated with the, with the maintenance of, uh, of all the equipment that you have. So um, you, you want to be able to put those together. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. So, um, uh, and then, uh, you know, and, and uh, yeah, nearly every system that's out there can be operated more efficiently. And I say nearly. I mean, I you know, you can pretty much say everyone. It's a matter of to what degree. So, uh, so how do we do all that? First of all, uh, and again, I'm I'm going to reiterate what Joe was saying. Look around this conference here. There are many people here that have services and products here to help. Um, and nobody here, I'm, I think I'm saying it okay that uh, nobody's here to sell snake oil. But uh, as the um, as the, as the person responsible for what's in your plant, you're, the, you're going to be the arbiter of what is the right thing for you. That's your job. You have to pick out what is important and what you think is going to work for you. And then talk to people uh, and uh, think that way and you'll come up with the, with the right questions to ask and the right, uh, the right places to look. So. Um, when we look at a compressed air system, uh, again, this, I'm, I'm reiterating a lot of things, but efficiency um, depends, uh, you know, it's, 
um, uh, CFM per horsepower, uh, horsepower per 100 CFM, uh, CFM per kW, whatever you want to, whatever terms you want to use, it doesn't matter. Um, the, you can look at it at one spot. A lot of plants um, have a, a constant load. Most plants uh, have a varying load. So what you want is a system that, uh, that adapts to whatever, whatever uh, load that you're running, be it uh, first shift, second shift, third shift, uh, uh, you know, days, weekdays, weekends, or whatever's going on. Uh, you, you want it to be running as efficiently as possible at all times. And uh, the reliability part of it depends on the, uh, the care that you give to the system, uh, not just uh, taking care of filters and uh, oil changes and things like that, but keep tabs on, on the age of equipment, uh, uh, monitor things. There's all kinds of uh, uh, new equipment out there for uh, uh, vibration monitoring and um, you know, pressure monitoring that you can, you can put in the cloud or you can put into your, into your plant. Uh, in, into your plant data analysis system, whatever, uh, you know, those are upgrades that you can do to existing equipment. You don't always have to go buy something new. So the two are related because a high performing system is typically well cared for and it's going to be, uh, it, it's going to be very reliable at the same time. I, I borrowed this slide. This was, uh, uh, to me, this is a classic. I borrowed it from Frank Moskowitz. He had it in his uh, session yesterday. Uh, it really tells the story, and uh, it, when you want to educate your, uh, your your financial people, your production people, as to why you think you want to optimize compressed air, show them this slide here because um, it's there's so much of that energy that's just wasted. It's in heat loss. Now you can recover it, but at the same time, if you don't need to, um, uh, if you don't need to use any more of it than necessary, you're better you're better off not doing that. So um, again, I, I like this. This and this is this is factual here. This, this is uh, this is good stuff. Um, so look at your equipment. Um, you know, uh, compressors. That's really the main one. But look at your dryers and also your drains that you have in your system. Uh, make sure that uh, you know what you have is good. Look around the show. There's a lot of new equipment out there. Some of it might uh, might be there to replace uh, you know some of your uh, some of your old stuff. Um, Controls. Um, if you operate more than one compressor at a time, there's a good chance that you could use a controller that will sequence, that will start, stop, uh, whether they be rotaries or centrifugals or even reciprocating. Um, you know, it's uh, a system will will keep you. Uh, it, it'll just run the system more efficiently. You're not uh, your pressure will stay at one spot. Again, that's the most uh, the most efficient way to do it, rather than. Uh, having you know like pressure uh, sequencing on on units, uh, you're always running at a higher pressure than what you need in your plant. So uh, and the other thing is monitor your system performance from anywhere. If you have a high temperature, high filter DP or something, get that into your into a data analysis this a, a data analysis system somewhere so that you can monitor it from your desktop or it can you know it can send you a text. You see a lot of these neat things out there. Uh, you can do that with your compressed air system too. So um, when you're looking at talking about services, um, you know, do you feel an audit's in order? Do you want to do that? If you do, if you're, if you're thinking that far ahead, before you get somebody in, um, look at some of the obvious things that have been talked about already. Air leaks. Um, you, know, you don't need to pay an auditor to come in and tell you you have 50% air leaks. Uh, if if you have the wherewithal and, and the talent in your, uh, in your maintenance staff to go uh, hunt down some of those things and, and repair them. That's basic blocking and tackling as, as we say that um, you, know, you can get that out of your way. Um, let, let an auditor come in and look for some of the things as, as Joe was talking about uh, piping uh, systems and drains and things like that that may not be as obvious. And it really happens. We have some plants that are 40, 50 years old and uh, what's running in that plant right now, uh, there may be 10% of what was there originally as far as equipment and processes and how they're done and things like that. Um, when somebody puts in a new piece of equipment, they need, uh, they need a, a compressed air for something, they'll go find a pipe, they'll, hopefully they'll find a valve, they'll tap into it. Nobody really understands or, or really cares what's upstream from it unless they start having problems later on. And that's, it's always, 
not always. I, I won't say everybody does that, but it's it's quite uh, it's quite common that somebody will look at that and not realize there's an issue with it until they find out that they don't get enough flow or uh, pressure uh, and things like that. So, uh, and hoses, um, uh, you know, check your, uh, you know, if you have a couple things, and, and again, there have been case studies that have been mentioned here where, you know, somebody's got 50 feet of hose and then there's two, uh, two uh, uh, air drills or uh, guns or something coming off of them. And, uh, you know, th those would give you a lot of trouble. And, um, make your system pressure higher than what it really needs to be. So, and um, in, terms of, in terms of maintenance, now I mentioned before that um, you know, we, do, we do use a lot of outside sources for, uh, for maintenance of our equipment. Um, we have some people who are very capable of, of maintaining a compressor, but they're also capable of taking care of some of the specialized equipment that we have in our plant. And um, so the thing to do with that is to develop a, a good relationship with one or more uh, 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 suppliers that you have available to you, and uh, and keep them on their toes. Make sure that they're doing, they're looking out for your best, uh, your best interest. Um, I also like um, I also like uh, 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 sayings from uh, from years ago or that I've heard over the years, little anecdotes. Uh, one of them, my grandfather used to say this about uh, he always bought. A car every bought a new car every three years, and uh, he never did any work on it. He always did uh, had the had the dealer do work for him. And he always said the sales department will sell you your first car. In this case, it can be your air compressor, boiler, washer dryer at home, anything like that. He said the service department will sell or not sell the the next units that you have. And um, there's so much that's dependent on uh, on having a good relationship. With your, uh, with, with your uh, maintenance supplier. Um, they can do a good job for you, they can be proactive, they can say, I see that you know, you're, gonna, you're, you're gonna need to get that filter or that, that heat exchanger cleaned, I, I can do that next month for you. Uh, or they can come in uh, a month later and you say things been, uh, you know, things been running hot or it's shut down. He says, yeah, I saw that and I thought maybe you might wanna do that someday. Um, there, there's a big difference in that because they're taking care of problems that you don't know have to, that you don't have to worry about uh, when, when done properly. Um, and uh, now, I work in the corporate group. I don't work in any particular plant. Uh, in the times I've been really doing working with compressed air at Shaw for about eight years now, and there's only one time that I actually wrote a purchase order for a uh, for an air compressor. The rest of them that we've purchased, I always let up to the uh, plant engineer or whoever's responsible in the plant because of this. I say, here are three machines that are comparable in terms of price, in terms of performance, uh, what, the, uh, what, what the sales force can deliver and what, what I think the, the, uh, the service group can deliver. But I, I let the choice up to the plant engineer because they're the ones who are going to have to live with it. And I, I tell a lot of people that, you know, the initial cost of, uh, of operating this thing is going to be forgotten, uh, you know, long after all of the bills are being paid for the, uh, for the electricity and the, and the service that's being done to it. Um, there's also another saying that... Um, uh, price is forgotten long after performance uh, is 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 or yeah, performance is remembered long after price is forgotten. Initial price is forgotten, and I, that that holds true in in a lot of industries. So, um, looking at a few suggestions that you can do, uh, present your compressed air system as a vital major uh, part of your operation. It is a utility, and a lot of people uh, just take it for granted. Um, uh, keep the equipment and the compressor room clean. Uh, you know, get some get some folks to go in there and clean the place up if it's if it looks like a like an old junkyard that makes noise and uh, and and you think that and you know somebody's somebody's going to look much fit more favorably upon it uh, like your boss for instance uh, if they see that you're doing your job to keep it clean and keep your staff uh, keeping it clean um, educate your plant manager or whoever is involved uh, show them that graph. Uh, that's in there and break out part of the utility bill even if you have to calculate it yourself to estimate it put some power meters on uh, uh, a good way with the, in the data in the uh, in the age of uh, the information technology 
uh, get power meters on these units, get flow meters, and start really evaluating the system performance. And you can find some money. You, it's real easy from there to say, I can save $20,000 a year with this $5,000 investment. And that's, that, that really works. And that should give you the, uh, the ammunition that you need to, uh, uh, to get things done. Um, a, uh, you know, uh, and you demonstrate your savings using uh, the efficiency that, that we're talking about, efficiency improvements, and there's usually a lot of them there. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, save the, uh, uh, work, work your way into saving some of that money. I like Joe's uh, uh, part where some of that savings goes right off to his, uh, to his supplier, and, and you have to have a good relationship with your supplier to be able to do that. But uh, get that, uh, get somehow, Make sure you're able to fund it or do your best to get some of that money funneled back into your system so you can do even more improvements and make it better. Uh, another saying, we don't talk too much about safety, but we, it's always out there. Some, everybody really has a priority uh, of safety. We're not talking about it too much here, but one of the things is people in the plant are rarely injured uh, operating machine or a process that's working the way it was designed. Uh, typically, when somebody gets hurt, it's because something wasn't working right. They, and, and uh, a lot of times they just, they were careless about something, but you keep things running well, uh, uh, it really lends itself towards uh, people being safe too. So again, uh, I really, uh, I haven't given uh, any answers. I've, I've said a lot of things that have already been said here, uh, either today or yesterday, and will be this afternoon and tomorrow morning. Um, but I hope maybe some of you have some uh, food for thought and, and some ideas of, of how to frame this out. I know it can be overwhelming if you're just looking around here, not if you're new to compressed air or you're new to, to your uh, plant engineer position or, or whatever, you're, whatever you're doing. Uh, don't rush into anything. Look it over. Ask questions. Uh, if, you take, if you take somebody's time, there's a lot of salespeople out there that will spend a lot of time with you. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice show like that. It appears that the uh, that folks will have time to work with you, and uh, don't rush into it. Uh, and uh, make sure that when you do your homework, so that when you go make a recommendation uh, to your company for what you want to do, that you're confident in what it is, and they can see that confidence in what you're saying, and uh, and, and and show some numbers, and uh, you know, it should it should lend your uh, lend yourself uh, uh, towards success a successful project. All right. Thank you.